Good evening, everybody. I'm Raymond. Glad to see all of you here. Uh, before we start, uh, please read the disclaimer clause. It's intentionally put a small print. <laughs> okay, actually what uh, we're trying to say is all the presentation here tonight is purely for education purpose. Okay, it is not the inducement for you to trade or for you to or give you any investment advice. So can you agree with that? Yes? Yes. 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 If no yes, cannot continue. Yes. Okay, then we can continue. Uh, tonight, we will just cover a few topics. Huh? One of the topics that we want to cover is uh, investment versus trading. Uh, and then the stock versus indices and how to profit from the world indices. And what is the mindset you should have from learning strategies? And then I will give you some swing and intraday trading strategy. And last, I will summarize with what are the key things that you need to do to have a successful trading. And then at the end, we will have some Q&A. Hopefully we have time for that. Lah. It depends on how much we can cover, and then we'll give you some Q and A. And just a bit intro of myself. And how many is the first time you see me? Oh, okay. Actually, it's not surprising because I'm a very, very shy person. I actually hide in the mountain to trade myself. <laughs> so I'm not the, the guy who always come out to conduct seminar. And this is one of the few rare occasions the IG invited me to come out to give a talk. And uh, anyway, I have been coaching for uh, the past three years, uh, although I have a full-time trader for over 15 years. But the past three years, I do some coaching and I coach more than 500 students. My students include uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Japan, and UK and US. And I also have been a guest speaker for various um, community broking house. So one of my uh, fourth year that I do, when I first started trading uh, 15 years ago, so I'm actually the pioneer developer. How many of you know of this thing called expert advisor or auto trading program? Auto trading system. Anyone use the MT4, Meta Trader? Yes, so for Meta Trader, you know that there's this thing called Expert Advisor. Yes? Yes. How many have been actually going to program some EA to do the trading for you? Huh? None? Okay. <laughs> I'm actually one of the pioneers to do it about 13, uh, 15 years ago. So um, because my background, I actually coming from uh, uh, NUS, I graduated in computer science. So I'm very strong in programming. And then I have been working in uh, 20 over years in a financial institution. So that's why I get to know a lot of financial trading models. So based on that knowledge, I built some uh, auto trading program. And my result actually was quite good because at that time, very few people know about this auto trading program. And very few, people, very few have this uh, programming knowledge to actually go and program the strategy. So I have a few uh, model that I built. Uh, System 5 uh, was a top 10 Zulu trader. Uh, they have this thing called copy trading program. So they mean they, they allow the public to copy your system, to copy, to follow the trick. So actually it was a top 10 in year 2010. And then I have another System 3. I actually achieved over 767% in one year uh, from May 2013 to May 2014. And then the last one, you haven't seen the best one yet. This one, System 7, well, I also cannot believe it. Just within two months from January to February 2015, and it achieved over 1,005%. So this is the kind of achievement that uh, I have done before. But I have to tell you that the risk is very high. Okay, to have this kind of result. Actually, I'm risking the whole uh, capital in the system. So I will not advise you to do it or so, unless you are prepared to risk all your capital, then you can try it. 
Um, before we start, uh, I want to know, eh, this is not the latest one I sent to you. <laughs> okay, can I have a show of hand? Uh, how many of you are the stock investor? Can I have a raise of hand? I should say everybody, uh, correct? Those who didn't raise a hand, uh, don't be shy. Because I have to know roughly how many of you are in this which category. Then I can know what kind of debt that I can go in. One more time. How many of you are the stock investor or have been invested stock before? Okay. Second, how many are Forex traders? I mean, you've been trading Forex. Uh. Last, uh, how many are index traders? Wow, that's quite a few. Uh. So, okay, we are, you are in the right topic, right seminar, right uh, scope of content. Okay, so actually for those who are involved in uh, cryptocurrency trading, uh, you know that the, this issue is the collapse last year, the uh, biggest news. The FTX uh, exchange collapse, and then the block fee and the liquid uh, exchange. So these are the, the first one, the FTX actually created quite a big hoo because it's uh, one of the biggest, uh, second largest exchange, uh, crypto exchange, and it also collapsed. So that's why it come to me a question, wow, cryptocurrency trading actually is quite high risk, right? That's why from last year, I think a lot of people suddenly uh, don't want to trade crypto anymore, don't want BTC anymore, don't want Bitcoin, don't want Ethereum, because all very scared because of this uh, FTX collapse. Then everyone going to stock trading. Then what happened recently? Then, Oh, also Jialat, because you got the Silicon Valley Bank, SVP, collapsed just two weeks ago. Then after that, followed by Signature Bank, wow, also got issue. Then another one, First Republic Bank, also got issue. Then you think US is only limited to US market. No, suddenly, two, three days ago, you tell you Credit Suisse, oh, also got problem. Wow, so actually, it is not just US market. Euro also coming in. I don't know which country also will be coming in sooner. But anyway, Credit Suisse very hang, right? Because UBS go and rescue it, right? Wow. So everyone relieved. Uh. So this two days, wholesale, yeah, the market coming out, right? Is it correct? Wholesale, yeah, like Bo Tai Chi, yeah, well. then hey, actually not true, you know. There are 160 US major banks uh, have a big floating loss. Floating loss. Uh. Anytime they can realize the loss, right now it's floating loss. But the, when the customer realize something is wrong, uh, everyone starts withdrawing money, then the same thing happens. Uh, SVP like that. Uh. This is the same thing will happen. This one is not code by me. Uh. It was reported. Uh, on some of the news, and you can do the research as well. And that's, that's where you come to the conclusion. Uh, actually, trading in stock, uh, although it's very conservative, but also quite high risk. Eh? Then you look at it. Now we have two categories, uh, investment or trading. So investment, normally we are looking at more like long-term, long-term uh, investment, like you, you buy and invest, you hold it for a few weeks or a few months. Then for trading, it's more on short term. So short term in the sense that we want it like a, you can go in in the sense a few minutes and you can come out in a few hours or you can uh, come out in a few days. So the different for these two categories, we will say that investment is more on swing trading. So take a longer time. And uh, intraday trading is more for trading. And uh, investment, you focus on capital preservation, right? So you want something very safe, you buy, hopefully you will lose a single cent of money, like the stock, you look for the major blue chip stock. So you hardly heard of any blue chip stock fail, right? Oh, Silicon Valley fail, it's actually one of the blue chip bank. Anyway, for trading, we are more aggressive. Right? We want to take some risk. We want to say, okay, this is a capital we want to risk. We want to have high risk, high return. Then for investment, normally the target, uh, normally the target 
is around 4% and above. Do you agree? Per annum, per annum. Why is it 4% and above? Let me ask you a question. What is the current fixed deposit rate now? Okay, highest you can get around 4%, right? 4 plus. So fixed D, you already can get 4%, right? Then if you don't invest, you put in fixed D, 4% already. Uh. So why you want to invest is because you want to get something higher than fixed deposit. That is the reason that you go and invest. Otherwise, I tell you, don't invest anything. Put in fixed deposit, very safe, very safe. Unless the bank closed down, OCBC, DBS, UOB in Singapore, these three big banks, government backing one. Unless Singapore government also closed down, then both Tai Chi one, you put in, eh? say save four percent per annum. Then, unless why you go and invest, correct or not? The reason is you want to get higher rate than a fixed deposit. You want to get something more than FD, ma? that's why your target must be at least 4% and above. Okay, so maybe to around 10% per annum. Ma. That is quite conservative already. Otherwise, don't invest at all. Okay, you aim only, want to get 1%, 2% return from your investment from any stock. Ma. Don't go and invest. Just put in fixed deposit. Then if you want something higher than that, you had to do trading already. Okay? Then trading, you can have a target like 3% and more, maybe like 3% to 10% per month, uh, per month, uh, per month. Okay. But if you are very skillful, you can get it like per week. But this one, no guarantee one. Huh. The difference is this one, no guarantee. Okay. But fixed D uh, got guarantee one. Okay. When you sign the fixed deposit with the bank, uh, they already guarantee with you already. Okay, they tell you, okay, after one year, after six months, after eight months, you get 3%, 4%. So this is already fixed. So it's guaranteed by the bank. Then what are the instruments you do for investment? You look for stocks, bonds, fixed deposit. Then what are the instruments you do for trading? Normally you will do Forex commodities uh, indices or crypto. Any other instrument that you have in mind that is not covered in this scope? Uh, I think none uh, because I more or less I cover everything under the sun. <laughs> okay, one thing I remember that uh, in 1990, uh, there's this thing called crop. I don't know whether who have this uh, experience before in 1990. Those people gray hair one or should have this experience. <laughs> in 1990, I started my investment. I also invested in stock. But then I find that Singapore stock very small, very return very slow. Then I go into Malaysia. Wow, Malaysia punting very fast one. Right now. Wow, you punt any Malaysia stock, you close your eye buy. After five days, three days, uh, control out also can make money one. So that's why I go into Malaysia uh, stocks. And this thing, Singapore said, wow, you cannot. All the Singaporeans uh, go to Malaysia, counter, they go they, uh, trade, then they lost all the revenue. So they have this thing called crude. Then they let Singapore broking house, okay, let you trade to trade through them. They still earn a Singapore commission, but then you can buy and sell uh, Malaysia stock. On the time is very, very hot. But something happened in 1999. Uh, Asia financial crisis. Wow. So around September there, so around September in 1998, wow, you never know Mahathir, he's still alive. Right? You know Mahathir suddenly announced, hey, everybody, uh, your crop share all suspended. You know why suspended? Because the value dropped a lot, dropped too much. So everyone, you will force sell around 70 to 100% loss. So it's very, very severe. So that's why after the incident, um, I changed my mindset. I say, in investing in stock, uh, actually also involves a lot of risk. 
and the risk is as high as trading because I can also lose all capital. If you know yourself, if you have buy any stock, I'm not sure that you have encountered any stock that you have bought actually gone down to zero value. Actually gone bust. The company actually also, okay, uh, high flux. If you remember high flux, very safe, right? It's a blue chip stock. Hey, also, government, the market also participated. But then the company also can close short one. So that's why I say it is not just uh, any safe uh, investment that you go to, it actually also can go bust. So the philosophy in your investment in trading is you only invest or trade the amount that you can afford to lose. Otherwise, you don't go into the market. Or you can just go for fixed D. Now it's very good rate already, uh, 3.5 to 4%, right? So it's quite good return for NM. So then I also look at it in Singapore. Let's say if I want to invest, I look around Singapore market. Wow, there are 640 mean bot listing stock. And then 215 catalyst uh, stock. So I said, wow, total, uh, you have, I think, more than 850 stock to pick. If I want to construct an investment portfolio for just for Singapore market only, I want to pick 10 stock or maybe 30 stock out of this 850 stock. Which one should I pick? I cannot mini money, mini more. Because every time I bought one, uh, that one also gone bust. So, so I said, hey, investment in stock is not a, it's not a very easy job, actually. Because you have to do a lot of study in order to pick 10 stock out of the 850 stock. Because you cannot just pick one stock and say that this stock will outperform, will be the best out of 850. You can't get anyone that you would not know which one is the best. So that's why I, my conclusion is stock investment also actually is not an easy job. This is only my own personal view. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, you, of course, I know that there are a lot of cows or uh, So you, there are a lot of people who can do very well in stock investment. Uh, then you can just continue your forte. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it because there will be people who have different skill set and different background. Then I look at if I want to invest in US market. Wow, worse. Singapore is 850 stocks. US market, more than 5,000, could be 10,000 stocks. Wow. Uh, if I close my eye, just buy an apple or orange, <laughs> whether you outperform or not, I also do know. It may not be the best also. So out of this one, if I want to go and pick maybe 30 stock, also not an easy job. This 5,000, you got more choice. Very tough. And then for stock investment, uh, if you want to have a meaningful return, normally you need around at least five to 25 stock to construct a meaningful portfolio. If you only pick up one or two stocks, uh, it's very quite meaningless, quite meaningless to call it an investment in stocks. So also you need uh, to do a lot of homework. Okay, your homework, you need to have a fundamental economy study and you need to uh, know the stock sector, the industry, and also uh, you need to do follow up the company news uh, data analysis, whether the company financial is still strong. And then you need some scanning software to help you do the stock pick, et cetera, et cetera. Last, you have to actually consistently monitor. Otherwise, uh, you may just disappear. One, uh. My experience after I invested a few stocks uh, and I didn't go and monitor it. And then after five years, I check again, and the stock disappeared from my radar. And it either renamed it, registered it, or already disappeared. So I have to call my broker, hey, where is this stock? How come disappear already? Uh? But they say already restructure. I don't know. Or the list already gone fast. 
That's why it's quite important if you invest in stock. You need to spend time uh, to monitor it. Otherwise, in no time, uh, it disappears out of your radar. And also, you need a bigger capital. Like, you want to hold five to 25 stock. If you have only five, uh, $500 or 5000 um, quite difficult to make a sizable return from stock investment. Then how? Can I show you a way to do it? Um, actually, what you can do is look at this thing called stock index. Okay, stock index, um, it actually tracks the performance of a group of stock that represent a particular country market, uh, sector or industry. And it also provides a snapshot of the overall market performance. Then it calculated based on uh, using the weighted average price of individual stocks. So normally larger company and those in higher market cap, it has a greater influence on the index. So that's why I started to look at the stock index. I find that it's much more easier job. Yeah, look at it like, okay, Dow Jones. Dow Jones, you are looking at 30 biggest US stock and S&P 500 large cap US stock. Then NASDAQ 100 US tech stock. And Russell, you had 2,000 small cap stock. But look at it, hey, quite easy. If I want to buy 30 US stock, I just want to buy one Dow Jones index. Then I cover 30 stock. I don't need to study this 30 stock. And usually all the stocks in the indexes, uh, they have uh, gone through quite a stringent uh, selection. So it's quite unlikely uh, the stock inside this index basket fail because they already gone through the selection criteria. Then currently, um, the Dow Jones is around 32,500 and S&P around 4,000 level, and NASDAQ around 4,500, and Russell around 1,007. So I find that, hey, actually my job is quite easy. That's why I started to focus more and more on uh, stock index rather than individual stock. So let's say I buy 30 stock, uh, US stock. Average, assuming one stock is uh, $2,000. So if I want to buy 30 stocks, then I need uh, 60,000 capital, right? Because 30 times 2,000, so I need about 60,000 capital. And that is roughly the capital you need to have a sizable, uh, meaningful stock portfolio, right? Okay? Then I look at it, hey, I buy one Dow Jones, uh, Assuming the Dow Jones now is uh, 34,000, then I pay $34,000. Hey, it's only half of what I'm going to pay for buying 30 stock. I say, hey, this is much cheaper. And in Singapore, they can easily give you a leverage one over 10, which means that I only pay one ten of the capital. So one ten of the capital, I only need to put in 3,400. I can buy one uh, Dow Jones index. It's only much cheaper and much more affordable than I buy 30 stock. And after that, you see, we look around. Hey, some broken house in Singapore actually can give you up to one over 50 leverage. Hey, if I use one over 50 leverage, huh, I divide by 50, I only need $680 you know, to get one Dow Jones index. So you, if you look at this mathematics, huh, you'll find that, hey, it's much cheaper, affordable, right? So I myself buy one Dow Jones index. I only need to use a leverage one over 50 years. Yeah? Then I only pay, I only put in the uh, $680. Then I can get one Dow Jones index, which covers 30 stock. Agree? Let's see, is this, what is a leverage that IG offer now? Uh, one, two? One to 20. Yeah, see around there. So one to 20, you, you will be, uh, you just put in 1007. So it's still quite a follower, right? That's why I said, hey, that's why I started playing all the indexes. See, wow, that, that I can encounter. After that, I look at it. Hey, actually, there's another use of indexes. 
because it can actually hedge the stock portfolio. I say I'm a diehard uh, stock investment uh, investor, and I hold maybe 20 stock blue chip. So when I have the market, I know the market is coming down. Okay, like past two weeks or past uh, two months, I know the market is coming down. Or during COVID time, you know the market is coming down. And then me, you push further, you don't want to cut your position because you are actually holding the stock for long term. Maybe you want to earn a, a yearly dividend. So you don't want to cut it. Then you don't want to cut it, but you know the market is coming down. So what can you do? Actually, you can use an index to hedge your stock position. Maybe you can just short sell the index first. Why are you still holding the stock? So let's say the Dow Jones is dropped 1,000 points from 34,000, drop to 33,000, drop 1,000 points. Well, Dow Jones is quite easy. You know? only you can drop 500 points. Achoo again 1,000 points. So it's not a problem. So assuming you just so, I do a very conservative, just say it dropped 1,000 points. If Dow Jones dropped 1,000 points, uh, the next day uh, I can tell you 90% uh, of your stock uh, will also drop one. Hardly you will not be affected and go up. One of the rare occasions will happen uh, because in this world, nothing is 100% guaranteed. But usually in general norm, if Dow Jones dropped 1,000 points, I can more or less say this, say that your stock that you're holding uh, is also dropping the next day. Uh. So 90% of the stock will also likely to decline. Then if you're holding stock for a long term and you don't want to liquidate, huh? so what you can do is just short sell the index in bear market to protect your stock holding position. So you just sell one Dow Jones from 34,000 square off at 33,000. Then you profit 1,000 point, right? So 1,000 point, if you use the IG index, uh, one point for one US $10 or Wall Street cash index, then, 1,000 points, you get $10,000, you know? huh? You put in one Dow Jones, just how I illustrated, one over 10, how much do you need? 1,007. So you put 1,007, you get one $10,000, you hold for 1,000 points. Eh? Still not bad, right? And bear in mind, because you don't want to cut your stock that you are holding. Uh, so this is another way you actually can protect it, your stock holding position. Just use it to hatch it. Good or not? Okay. So you must learn this uh, technique a bit. How to sell at least one index. <laughs> one index, at least, which is Dow Jones. <laughs> because it's a world in indicator, uh, world leading market index. So, or the other way, if you are long-term investment, you hold it, let's say, I don't want to do anything, I'm very lazy. I only want to do yearly return. Beginning of the year, uh, start of the year, January, I buy. And I'll, until end of the year, December, I sell. So from beginning of the year, first day of the trading, 4th January, 2-1, you buy. Uh, the time Dow Jones is 30,600. And I say, I don't want to do anything, hold it, hold, 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 hold. Until end of the year, the last day of trading month, 27 December, and I sell you all. Eh? You know how much you can get? Wow, in 2021, uh, uh, if you do this nothing, buy first trading day and square off last trading day, December, you gain 5,000 over point, 5,760. So assuming same thing, you buy the same contract, $1 for uh, one point for ten dollars, so you actually getting fifty seven thousand dollars based on um, thirty thousand six hundred capital. Then your net gain is eighteen percent, and you are using leverage. Huh? Wow, I haven't calculated if you are using leverage yet. I'm calculating based on no leverage. Huh? That means one to one. Your net gain, your net gain is eighteen uh, percent. Good or not? Good. Okay, let's say next year. You know that next year, COVID. Okay, last year, 2022. So you sell. First day of the month, okay, 
first trading day, 3rd January 20, 2022, you sell 36,400. And again, same thing, you are a lazy trader or you are conservative or you don't want to do anything, one, you are a long-term investor. Okay. Hey, investment, uh, you can also sell, you know. Investment not necessary must buy. In stock, different. Stock, no choice. You have to buy. Then you can sell. Okay. But in trading, uh, you can sell, then you buy. Uh, so that's a difference. So if you find that the market is coming down, you can just sell and then hold it until the time that you like it and you square off. Okay. You can sell and hold it for one year, by like this case, uh, but generally first trading day until the last trading day, 26th December, and you profit of uh, 3,200. 20 point. So again, same thing. Uh, if it's one point ten dollar, you get thirty two thousand two hundred. So this one not necessarily means that you must hold for one year. You can hold for one month, assuming that you know that December is not a good month, or December is a very good year, a good month. Then you can just buy first from the first December and it's square off on thirty first December on the last trading day. So this is the same thing that you can do. Uh, you can do it on a Monday basis, or you can do it even on the weekly basis. So let's say start of this uh, Monday, you know that whatever crash between the Swiss uh, Credit Suisse is not uh, actually reflecting the actual um, market value of the whole Euro stock market. Then then you can actually buy on Monday and square off on Friday. So the same thing happened. If you find that the scenario is very bad, you think the market is coming down, you can just sell on Monday and close it off on Friday. So you can also do a weekly basis. So it's not necessary that in trading, uh, especially like stock index, you need not have to do it on a daily basis, get in and out with a few minutes. You can also hold for a few weeks, a few days, or a week, or a month, or a year. Then your, your job becomes very easy. No need to go through, analyze all the 30 stock, read through all the fundamental uh, stock scanning. And next, let's see. Then let's go through what are the world indexes in this, uh, in this world in the globe, in, Singapore, in the whole world that we can find. Okay. The, the main thing that I uh, trading on, these are the few indexes I do. Uh, the first one is Nikkei 225, which is Japan. Uh, you see, I buy one Nikkei, uh, it covers 225 stock. Oh, my job so easy. I just want to buy one Nikkei index, then it's the same as I bought 225 uh, stock in Japan. So my job is quite easy. Then my capital is also very small. You know, if I buy 225 stock in Japan, uh, how much capital do I need? Assuming one stock, 1,000. So you need at least, wow, 225 times 1,000. <laughs> we don't have that kind of capital as well. 225,000. Okay. Then uh, second one is Australia index called ASX 200. So buy one Australia index, you get 200 stocks in Australia. Wow, easy or not? So your job becomes very easy. You just buy one country index. Then you cover quite a number of stocks. Like Korea, Kospi, 200. Uh, Singapore, STI or Simski, you got 30 stocks. And Taiwan, you got 50. And uh, China, A50, you also got 50 stocks. And Hong Kong, uh, China, A Hong Kong, Hansing, 50. And German, uh, Europe. Uh, DEX 40 stocks and UK FUSI 100 stocks. So the US market just now I covered already SP 500, Dow Jones 30, NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000. So you, you find that if you just need to click yourself over the hurdle, you say, okay, I don't care what is it, I just want to learn how to buy one basket of stock. Then you just need to buy. Then you, you next is you go and select which country you like. Okay, you like Japan, you think the Japan economy is picking up, you just buy one Nikkei. So you think Australia uh, country economy is picking up, you just buy one Aussie index. 
So, or you think that the UK, the whatever the Huha, they have the prime minister resign all this, you will resolve soon. They just need to buy one FUSI FT, uh, what do you call it, FTSE 100, hold the UK uh, stock. So your job becomes very easy. You don't need to do a lot of study. You don't need to know which stock you want to pick. You just need to pick one particular country index that you like, and you find the economy is uh, improving, then you just buy it. Or you find the, the other way around. You find that the, the economy actually is deteriorating. But you find that the Australia uh, economy actually is over uh, performing now, it's going to decline now. You can sell the index. Uh, this is a different from the stock investment. You can also sell the index if you think the economy is coming down. But I think the economy is going to be deteriorated. So that's why the stock uh, indices investment or in this tra index trading, it gives you two direction uh, trading. You can buy or you can sell without actually holding it. It's unlike the investment in stock. You need to buy first hold the stock in hand, then you can square off and sell it. So hope that this one give you another perspective already in, in uh, investment or trading, that you actually, you can sell first. You don't have to buy first, okay? So this is the first thing that you have to learn in trading. You can sell first. No need to buy first. I repeat three times already. Yeah. I repeat three times, that means very important. This concept is very important. Next thing you want to know is the timing. Timing, okay. For Japan, Nikkei, it starts quite early, 7 a.m. Or oh, some sort yawning already. <laughs> then you don't do too early one. Okay, maybe uh, after one hour, 7.50 a.m., you do the Australian index. If you still find too early, Cosby start at 8 a.m. or you wait for Singapore uh, futures uh, start, Simsky start at 8.30 a.m. or China, uh, Taiwan at 8.45 or China at uh, 9 a.m. or Hansing start at 9.15 a.m. If morning session all too early for you, some can only wake up after 10. Do the afternoon one. Okay, go to afternoon. Uh, go to uh, German DAX start at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Uh, FUSI UK start at 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Uh, why is that at 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? Because in Europe country or US country, they have this thing called daylight saving. So every six months of the year, uh, they have one hour time shift. So for US market, they already shifted one hour earlier. So right now they start at 9.30 instead of 10.30. And German DAX, they will shift the time uh, daylight saving start from the Sunday and next Monday onward they will start at 2 p.m. instead of 3 p.m. So same thing like the uh, FUSI UK. Then next thing uh, before we talk about how to profit from uh, world indexes, uh, one question I have to ask and let you think about it is have you ever thought why all studying and applying the same method, but all have different results? Okay, think. Last time, uh, when you start schooling in a primary school, secondary school, okay, or JC or university, all of you are attending the same lecture, right? The same teacher give you the same thing, same textbook, same questionnaire, same revision. Then all come into the exam hall after six months or one year. Okay, go and sit for the exam. Hey, all learn the same thing, ma. How come some got A, some got B, some got C, some got D, some got F. Uh, sorry, I didn't point F to not pointing to F. Some got F. So everyone got different results, but all of you are learning the same thing for the same teacher. Correct. The teacher don't say he buy. We don't say some teacher very biased. Uh. We say in general, most teacher not biased. Right? We teach the same thing in a class, same class. But why uh, everyone got different results? Eh? So does it mean that some actually apply more thing 
uh, he come to the second question. Is it because he have used more strategy and then uh, more method? That's why he got more profit. That's why he got the purge. Is it because he study more textbook or he spend more time to do? Uh, he add in more uh, CCA private tuition. So actually, all this come up to one thing. It is not about the technique of method. It is not about the technique of it. It is about the thinking process. You see how the student think and how he absorb and how he internalize it and how he apply it. It actually makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Or in a, another thing is we call it a risk management. How you manage your risk in trading. So this is the thing that make it the different that why everyone learn the same thing, but not all will get the same result because everyone has different personality. And everyone has a different thinking. So I can tell you the same thing, but then you interpret it differently. So that is the thing that we need to lead to the next thing is you have to know yourself first. Okay, you have to know yourself whether you are the kind of a call momentum breakup type or sideways reversal type. Okay, this first thing is very important for trading. If you want to profit from trading, what does it mean? Momentum breakup means that you are momentum trader. You like to follow the trend. I mean, you must have the concept that when you break up, uh, you prepare to buy at a higher price because the price break out already. So you are not going to buy at the lowest price when the price is going up. So likewise, if the market is coming down, you are prepared to sell when it breaks down. You are prepared to sell at a lower price instead of you sell at a higher price. Whereas for the reversal or sideways uh, reversal trader, your thinking is the other way around. You only buy at a lower point and you only sell at the highest point. So this one make it the totally different on deciding what is your personality and what is your trading pattern. I can tell you right now it's very easy. The sideways reversal one is quite easy because you are normal human. You want to sell, of course you sell at a higher price, right? Why could people sell at a lower price? Right? You want to buy, of course you buy at the bottom, you buy at a lower price, normal human. That's why if you are a normal human, you look for sideways reversal. If you are abnormal one, it's called got short circuit one, you go for momentum breakup. Because momentum breakup, you only break up higher already, then you go in. That means you buy at a higher price, then you go in. When the market is lower, you don't do anything. Only when the market move up, then you go and buy. So of course you have to buy at a higher price. So a logic will. This kind no logic one, right? But this kind of people will make money also because it choose a turning point when the market is turning up. Or when you sell, uh, when the market is so good, uh, this guy don't sell one. Uh, the momentum trader only sell when the market is crashing down. Then when you sell in the market lower point, of course, you can only sell when the market price to start drop. Then you can only sell at the lowest price. So that's why this is a thinking process. It determines what strategy you must apply. And this is very, very important because all strategy that you learn, you only come to these two categories. Either you do a momentum breakout or you do a sideways reversal. And you must make sure that you are normal human being or abnormal. Then you choose the strategy you want to apply. Otherwise, very difficult for you to make money because you pick the wrong strategy. Then next thing is uh, you, you have to see what is your personality. Whether you, uh, you like to do scalping, okay, you take a small pit, but then you have to do many, many trades a day. Because you only do five to 10 pits, five to 10 points a day, uh, a trade. Then of course you need to a lot, you need at least 10 to 50 trades a day. Then you take a smaller time frames uh, chart, you need a M1 for one minute chart or five minute chart or 15 minutes chart. 
as your trading time frame. Or you do a day trading uh, day trader, then you close position by end of the day. So you do average about one to 10 trades and you use a M15 or M30 uh, chart or H1. Or swing trader, you hold overnight for a few days, more than one day, or maybe up to one to two weeks. Then you use a H1 hourly or four hourly or daily chart. Then if all this doesn't apply, then last category, position trader, the one that I mentioned, you just buy and hold for a few weeks, few months, or maybe a few years. <laughs> So how do we make profit from World Index? The first thing you look for is turning point. As I mentioned just now, okay, the turning point doesn't mean that market must reverse down. Turning point can be market reverse up because that is also a turning point. So that's why people, when they talk about turning point, their first thing they have in mind is market is U-turn, reverse. Actually not true. Market continuation breakout, that is a, another turning point. So two directions for the turning point. And how do you get the turning point? There are few ways. Um, the first and foremost, the most easy one is the support and resistance. Okay. So the turning point always occur around support and resistance area. And then second one is use some uh, pattern like call a channel or it's a flat or is it a double top or double bottom or you can use indicator your indicator you can use a moving average parabolic uh, Bollinger Bank Ichimoku okay taking RC Fibonacci or people point average to range so those are the few uh, way that you can look for a turning point let us use the most effective one which is the most important one that you have to learn Okay, you want to make money? This one is the most important one. Support and resistance. Okay, let us see how do we make use of it to make money. Okay. So you want to identify the high probability turning point, support and resistance. So assuming that this is a, a price moving down, 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 down. And right now, the price is around here, stop at here. 20013. Okay, 20013. So at this point of time, I need some participation. Uh, so I know that you are with me. At this point of time, can you tell me the market is it going up or down? No need to think so hard. Uh. No, no price. Uh. Those things that is going up. Raise your hand. Those things is going down. Wow, okay. Very few people think, majority think it's going up because this part is uptrend. However, I say maybe going down because if I draw a trend. Yeah, this part from here. This is also coming down. This is a downtrend. So you are at a point that 50% chance going up. 50% chance coming down because you are basing on this recent event here. So you think it's going up. But then if I look at a bit longer term, just a few bar away, actually it's coming down. So that's why there's a, in trading, this where make the trading fun because it's always only high probability maybe going up or high probability may be coming down. Then I tell you, why not we skip all this, whether it's up or down. We identify where's the support and resistance. Okay, let's look at the support and resistance. Okay. So if I tell you, um, I draw a support and resistance line. I say, hey, down here, this little tail here, this is a resistance. And this little tail here, this is a support. And then there's another support here, another resistance here. So that means I got, again, now I have come into two questions. Okay, I got two resistance on top and I got two support below. Then what do you do? 
Hey, why you laugh until like that? Please tell me why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, I sort of cheat. I have an indicator uh. that shows you. Uh, uh, it's going up or down? It's going down. It's like it's uh, Okay. You use whatever indicator you have. But right now, I can I share with you my way of doing it? Okay. I share with you my way or indicator. You continue doing your what you are doing. You have been profiting using that same way. Don't need to change. But open the mindset. Let's say we want to learn something extra. Okay, maybe this one will help you improve further. Let's say I look for support and resistance. So I already know. Uh, I have one. Uh, I have two resistance level, and I also have two support level. Then again, I say that. I am in a neutral one, okay? I always say that market is 50-50. 50% chance going up, 50% chance going down. Okay? I'm neutral. So if I'm neutral, what do you do? Then you already draw the resistance level, right? So if you don't know how to draw resistance level, I give you one idea. Uh, in IG, there's this thing called pro real time. So, so long as you're an IG client, you can uh, launch this thing called Pro Real Time. And it actually auto plot for you, you know, auto plot. This red line, uh, this resistance line is auto plot one. So when I see a resistance line, what I can do is very easy. I just do a cell. Uh, I just do a cell at the resistance level. So you already, system already auto identify for me. Or again, like just now I do, a, I just draw a red line. So resistance level, I put a cell level. So I sell here at this point. This one, the red line is 19735. So I just put a sell uh, limit there. So that means uh, when the market move up there, I sell at 19735. So I just put a sell. No need to think so hard. Resistant level, I sell. Support level, I buy. Then after that, it did come up. Okay. So my job is done. After you sell, then I exit. Uh, I sell at 19735 and I exit at 19500. So I profited 235 points. Assuming one point is $10, then how much did I get? 2350 Quite easy job, right? So your job is very easy in trading. You only need to identify support and resistance. And you sell at the resistance. And you buy at the support. Finish, period. Easy? Easy. Hey, come on, it have to be easy. You know, huh? I have to go back already because it was so difficult. <laughs> Agree, easy? Yeah, so this is one way. The most easy one to do trading is you just need to identify support and resistance. Once you're able to do that, your job 50% done. 50% done. Then next thing, how do we go further? Uh, second thing I want you to learn is avoid immediate market execution. And you have to try to do pending order. Do you know pending order is free of charge? Mainly free. You put pending order is free one. Broker don't charge you any fee, okay? Unless it's executed then there may be a small commission for each trade. Otherwise, put in the order, uh, it's free or charge. How many one like Singaporean? A free or charge, free thing one put in, because it's free. So there are four order you have to learn how to put in. Sell limit, buy limit, buy stock and sell stock. So these are the four order you have to learn. Very important. Try to avoid direct market execution. Try to only put in panning order. Put in only panning order. So what's the difference for these four order? Okay. Assuming that uh, again, just now we go back to the same chart. Okay, the price right now stored here. Mm -hmm. So if I think okay, the price may be going up here until here. Okay. But then I'm not sure whether it can break this uh, resistance or not. 
So I will put in a pending order because I know this resistance here is at 20082. Then I will put a buy stop above this resistance. I will put a buy stop at 20100, which is above 20082. That means once the price break the resistance level, okay, then my buy stop order executed. Then I will have a buy order in. So I will have buy order in at 20100. So this is buy stop. That means you are buying at the price higher than your current price. So it's called buy stop. And then you put a sell limit on the second resistance level. Okay, you sell here at 20233. Okay, so this is a sell limit. So that means when the market is at this level here, 2003, I'm going to put a buy stop at 20100, which is above the first resistance level. That means once the market breaks the first resistance, I assume that it's going further up, chong liao, all the way, go all the way, hose liao, chong liao, ki liao, all the way until 2023, the second resistance level. So I put in two orders here, buy stop and a sell limit. But then as I said, market is 50-51. Then what happens if you go down? Ah, then I put in another two orders. I put in another one order here, sell stop. Okay. That means this is a support level 19834. So if the market break 19834, I sell it at 19800. Only after the market break this resist, break this support, then my sell order executed. Then I will do a buy limit here at the support, buy at the 19650. So that means total I put in four order. Two, one buy stop, one sell limit, and one sell stop, and one buy limit. So this is normally how I do my trade plan. It's quite easy. You no need to be very kanchong. Usually first support and the second, uh, first resistance and the first support. Usually is for the market to break open one. Normally you go for the second support and the second resistance. Then you get in. So wait until the first support and the first resistance broken. Then you trigger your order. Then you go into the second level. So always try to identify two levels of support and two level of resistance. First level is for it to be broken, to be broken out. Second level is for you to take profit or do a reversal. Does it make sense? Okay. So this is one of the trading uh, strategy or trading plan that you can actually make use of it. First, you identify your support and resistance. Look for two level of support and two level of resistance. Then the first one, wait for it to break. Second one, for you to take profit or for you actually do a reversal trade. Okay, how many understand this part of logic? Do you need me to illustrate further? If yes, raise your hand. If not, then we carry on. Yes. Force breakout. As I said, market is 50 51. <laughs> so, you, this is only on a high probability scenario. Okay, high probability. Later, I'll explain what it means by high probability. Because there is no certainty one in the market trading. So, you must always put a stop at your trade plan. And you will prepare if your trading strategy, you have like a 60% win rate or you have a more than 1.5% expectancy ratio, then your trading strategy is very good. You just need to stick to it. And you can never have a 100% winning trade, winning strategy. Right? This is only high probability scenario. Okay. High probability means that you can win maybe 60% and above, maybe 60% to 70%. 
you can hardly get a strategy that give you um, 80 to 90 percent win rate. And even if you have that kind of strategy, probably your, your trade entry very few in a year. Maybe one year you hit one, two times. And whether you can afford to wait until the one, two time. Okay, uh, just now there's another one. Uh, there's no time frame. It depends on your own uh, trading preference. You can have a um, trade for one minute time frame, or you can trade for five minutes, and you can trade for. Um, what I'm sharing is just a general uh, strategy that you can apply. In any of the strategy that you have learned, you can apply this same concept. Look for two support and look for two resistance level. Next we go, the next one. Okay, third thing I want you to learn, uh, first is the support and resistance. Second is the four level of pending order. Okay, buy stop, sell stop, buy limit, sell limit. Third thing I need you to learn, and it's very, very uh, powerful, is called a conservative approach. So what does it mean? So assuming the market is moving up from here, Okay, go up to A, go up to B, then you turn down to C and come back down to D. So let's think of it. Uh, when the market comes up to here, okay, short means I sell. So I sell at A, okay, at this price. And versus the same, the market comes down to D. I'm selling at the same price, right? A and D is the same price, right? So I sell at B, and then when the market you turn down to C, so B and C see also the same price right so what does the difference what does it make any difference same uh, i put a and b so long as I put sell uh, i get the same result so actually if you are trading long enough uh, i tell you it's very different so you need to know why is it different okay so a and b is against the trend okay because you are selling when the market is going up. You sell A, okay? You thought it's very good price. From huh? because the market is here, you sell to A. Or oh, market move to A, you sell. Oh, very good price. Then go up further somehow. No, never mind B. I still sell because I still got money. Then market go up somehow until here. Yeah, hey, tell you different already. You your confidence level shaken already. Or oh, your your pocket money run out already. You look at your capital, oh, the guy hit margin call already. Very different already. So when you sell at A and B, when you come to the tip of the level, when you come to the tip right on top here, uh, your feeling is very different already. Especially you haven't cut loss on A, you're still holding on B. So you are actually selling a and B, you hold two short position, and the market still go against you. I tell you, a uh, very irrational thing happened down here. You go and cut, cut, cut. <laughs> or you don't cut, uh, the broker cut for you because margin call. You put it over trade. <laughs> because you're very confident, uh, by the time you reach A, uh, by the time you reach A, you thought market will come down. It didn't. By the time you reach B, you thought market will come down. Also didn't. So market come to here, I tell you your confidence level shaken already. I say, oh, jialat, yeah, market is going to go chong all the way, don't know, to the sky. So you cut, 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 cut. Eh, and the market you turn down. So the same guy, uh, I the other guy, okay, so you cut already. Then the other guy down here, I also sell, I sell at the same price, C. Market come out D, I sell again. So I holding two short position. Eh, a feeling different. So you see the what is the difference? Because C and D, uh, the, you are following the trend. C and D market is coming down, so you sell. Let's show or oh, C. Go down some more D. Add another one. So the feeling different, but both of you are at the same price. Right? You sell at the same price, but the one sell at A and B. By the time market move up further, very kanchong already, very very kanchong. Especially if you are using full leverage, until your capital almost used up. 
So when you reach the top, uh, a market, maybe you don't cut, uh, the broker also cut for you. So that's why it's very different. Then same thing, let's look at the next one. So if the market is coming down, market coming down, okay, market coming down, right? If market coming down to A, you thought very good price, uh, because market down. Then drop down some more, never mind. I got a lot of money. B, I buy again. Eh, still go down. Until here. See, well, I think market is really go down very all the way down already. So you cut off or you sell. Then the same thing. Uh, the guy come in here after the market you turn at the C, he bought at the same price as B. Then market go further up. You make it in profit already. Then come to D, it's the same price as the guy who bought at A. But then he buy again. But then he is no fear because he's in his favor. Because right now C and D is following the uptrend. So when you are doing this, that's why I say that it's the same price level, but buy at C and D is better off versus A and B. So you see the difference right now? This means that when the, if you want to do a buy, when the market comes down at a very good level, you still don't buy. Hold your gun, hold your urge until the market you turn up. Okay, let's do the scenario. Okay, so this is a downtrend that we last week. The market was from here, come down, a wow, very high price. You don't want to buy. The market, okay. Uh, okay. So the market come down to A, then you start buying. Wow, little bit profit, very happy. Right? The market come down to B, wow, jarat. never mind, buy again. The market break, wow, this one like break your support already. Go down further until here. I tell you here, 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 here. Well, a lot of irrational thing happen already. I think, well, jin jia la dia. Because you hold on, assuming this is a day candle. Well, if you are holding one day, one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven day, eight day, this is almost two weeks already. Uh. I tell you, one week only got five trading days. So 10 candle, uh, 10 days, we reach two weeks. You hold until two weeks, uh, I tell you, you cannot tahan anymore already. Because you are sitting on the floating loss. Once you're sitting on floating loss, uh, you cannot sleep properly. <laughs> so, if you wait until the market, you turn up. C and B is the same price, but then you start buying here. And then D and A is the same price, but you start buying here. So, it's very different already. Then, let's see how do you do it. So, when the market come down, okay, when, the market, when you are here, when the market come down, so you are putting in a buy limit. Okay, this is a buy limit. Then the second one, you put a second order, you put a second buy limit. So A and B is called buy limit. But then when you wait until the market comes down to here, then you put uh, this one C here is called buy stop. And then B is also called buy stop. So this is a different that just now I said you have to learn how to do the panning order. Buy stop, sell stop, buy limit, sell limit. So when the market is against you, you have a chance to put a buy limit or at the lower price. Right? We call you are here, ma. so you can put a buy limit here, put a buy limit here at the lower price. But then when you are down here, you want to wait for market to go up, you must put a buy stop C and a buy stop D. So when you want to enter market and you are momentum trader, okay, this is follow the trend. You have to learn how to put a buy stop for an uptrend. Okay. And the buy limit, use it for your profit taking. Okay, let's see the other scenario. 
So you identify support and resistance. Uh, then you identify A, B, C, D. This is uptrend. Then same thing. What we do is uh, we do uh, when the price is here, when the market move up. Okay, as I mentioned, this uh, support and resistance, resistance level. So it sell at the sell limit. We well, very happy for a while, right? But then the market break up, break up. Wow, your second level sell. Then the market go up, go up some more. Here you go. I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bar. Ten bar, if you one bar is one day, ten trading days, uh, one week or five trading days. Ten trading day means two weeks. So you are holding floating loss for two weeks. Whatever your 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 sin. Your logic that you think very, you already have a very clear plan that the market is coming down. You sitting for two weeks floating loss, ah, the feeling different already. Your mindset also different. Already. You think that the market is going out already because what happened? Why the market is going out? Because broke your support already, you have the resistance level already. Ah. You're sitting above your resistance level. So your logic thinking all different already. However. If your market price is here, you put a sell stop here, that means the market only come down itself. The market come further down, then you sell again, sell stop. Then your difference is your, your feeling again very different. Because right now you are doing follow the trend. So you have to learn how to put sell stop in a downtrend. How to do buy stop in an uptrend. So this is very important. You must know. What is the difference between buy stock, buy limit, sell stock, sell limit? So after you apply these three uh, things, first thing is support and resistance. Support and resistance, you learn how to plot it. If you don't know how to plot it, use IG Pro real time, auto plot for you. Then second thing is you must learn how to put buy limit, sell limit, the pending order, sell limit, sell stock, buy limit, buy stock. Number four, number three, you have to learn is you want to follow the trend. Do a conservative approach. Unless you are the reversal trading, okay? Then you go for sell limit. But if you are doing a trend following, you do a sell stop. Okay? Woo! Clear, raise your hand. Oh, okay. Blur one, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, la, majority clear, so I don't have to cover. <laughs> no, it's not a stop loss. It's not a stop loss. I haven't talked about stop loss here. And stop loss is not my topic tonight. <laughs> okay. Uh, later, Ethan maybe will, will illustrate the stop loss. Or what your guarantee stop loss. Okay, so to conclude the what we have learned the three things that you have to apply, uh, you need to know how to profit using five R. What are the five R? Number one, you have must have a right index or right instrument. It depends on what you are doing. So you have to choose the right instrument or right index. Then the second R, you must have the right money. You have to know how much capital you want to put in, then how much uh, percentage or capital you want to allocate for the trading for each uh, trade that you executed. Then the third one is the right price. Right price, you have to get in at the high probability entry and exit level. Then you get in at the right price. Number four is the right time. Right now, it depends on what index you are trading. Although you are trading at the same index, huh, you have to know what time you get in. Example, like I tell you, I trade Nikkei 225. Again, very early, 7 a.m. has break out and stand by already. You don't wait until 10.30. Okay? When it's 10.30, you still trade Nikkei, but the, the movement is not there already. Okay. Same thing like Hansing. Okay. You want to trade you 9 a.m. You better stand by and trade put your, all your trade plan, everything get ready. Okay. By the time 11 a.m., uh, I think most of the move is over already. So you come in at 12, uh, 12 p.m. during lunchtime. The market don't move. You wait until 1 p.m. The market also don't move. 
because 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. is the Hansing lunch time. So you must know what is the timing that you want to get in. Then the last one is you must have a right strategy. And just now I mentioned, yeah, you are either a momentum breakout, that means a training uh, trend follower, or you are doing a sideways reversal. So you have to choose which strategy you want to apply. And different market, uh, they have a different strategy, different phenomena. Although every market, they will have a sideway, they will also have a breakout. But then there are certain strategy you apply on a certain index or certain instrument, you have a higher probability winning rate. So you have to go and choose the correct strategy to apply the correct index or instrument and use the right money. You must know how much you put in for each trade or your whole capital and get in at the right price, get in standby trade at the right time. A lot of people tell you Forex 24 hours, you can trade any time. Bullshit, not true. There are certain times you have to stand by. Okay, economy figure with this time. Okay, and the market open time. We are trading a dollar in a okay, US market opening time. Okay, you go and trade forex between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. lunch time, you go and see. Uh, 12 p.m. 12, 12 to 1 p.m. lunch time, I got time to trade uh, because I'm working. So my lunch time, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. I can trade. You go and trade forex during 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. and your result. Um, nothing happened. Uh. <laughs> you must have put in a fixed deposit 4% for for end. Hey, uh, before I share with you what are the strategies that we can try, I want to get you to the right mindset first because this is very important before you learn any strategy. First of all, the first thing first. No strategy is 100% profitable and not even 80% or 90% profitable. Most of the good strategy here, only around 60 to 70% winning rate. So you have to accept the fact first. Can I accept that? Yes. Raise your hand. Okay, then I can carry on. No, uh, sorry, I cannot give you higher probability. You, you can leave now because the next strategy I share is not 100% profitable. Okay, any strategy with expectancy ratio more than 1.5% or win rate above 60% uh, is good strategy. So you have to accept the fact that uh, this is the reality in the trading strategy and in the trading world. Then next thing is consistency is the key. So if you want to do trading, you have to keep up the same strategy. You apply the same thing over and over again. And so long as you have 60% winning rate, then your and you consistency performing the same thing over weekly, over Monday, then you are a good trader, you can make a good income, good trading income. So uh, I did mention a little bit about expectancy ratio. What does it mean? Uh, it's a formula you can calculate for each unit of risk. So it's like the average gain um, winning percentage minus of average loss um, loss percentage. So you, you can compute that. So how do you have the correct mindset? As I said, market is random. Uh. So uh, just now I said, I look at the trade plan. Hey, I tell you straight away, it's 50, 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent going up, 50 percent going down. Then I just need to apply a strategy, which I use just now. I use a support and resistance. Then I can have a win rate of 60 percent. Then I go in half. So I just keep using that. Then. Um, if it's 60% win rate, what does it mean? Means that um, I will win 60%. So which means that uh, out of 10 trade, okay, I will win six trade and I lost four trade. So assuming that first trade I win, second trade I lost, third trade I win, fourth I lost. 
win loss win loss win win loss loss win uh sorry win loss win loss win win loss win win so i win six times right so assuming each time i take 100 dollar profit and i cut loss 100 dollars so total net i make 200 dollars so this is the 60 percent win rate so when you are doing this kind of uh, strategy normally it happens this way and you will be quite comfortable to execute it because you know that you execute 10 times you win six times however market is random the market is random and then second week let's say it happened this way you win 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 you win six times huh? wow what's say this strategy this week worked very well then loss 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 four times you still make two hundred dollar huh? your win rate is still 60 percent huh? you still win six times loss four times all right when market like that huh? you still quite okay to carry on because you win first correct you got money in the pocket already huh? so never mind you win six times you lost four times it's okay you still make two hundred dollars however let's say third week huh? third week market this time for all the jack up okay lost lost second trade also lost third trade also lost fourth trade also lost Do you execute the fifth trade? Honestly, be a normal human being. Tell me, have you had this experience before? Let me tell you, uh, I'm a normal human being. Uh. If this is a new strategy I've learned from some master, I will curse him straight away. What? Wow, he lost four times. Fifth trade, I don't want to do. I observe first. Quite see, bro. Then the guy win there. Eh. Why did he put in? Because I observe. Eh. I don't believe. Sixth trade, I also observe. See whether the guy die or not. Hey, eh, still win there. Eh. Why did he put in? Eh. Seventh trade, okay lah. I put in. Maybe I put fifty dollar. Uh, hey, win there. Eh. Okay. Then eighth trade, I go in. Okay. Nine, ten, okay. So actually, yeah, uh, your net, uh, although the same strategy, but because you encounter consecutive losses four times, you scared two times didn't put in, so your net balance is actually zero. Because human being is very funny, one. We are negative buyers. What does it mean? If you lost money, uh, you at last big, big one. You think that they oh, lost it, lost it. Then straight away, you forgot. Uh, you forget straight away that last time I win six trade day, I forgot already. First week, I win six trade day, I forgot already. Second week, I win six trade already. I only remember the last four days, I lost four times. This is normal human being. <laughs> but then, if, if uh, the market go this way, uh, from here, you lost, second week, you lost on the seven trade, eight, nine, ten. Second week, you lost four trade. Continue third week, you lost another four trade. I tell you, uh, you consecutively lost eight trade. Uh, what do you think, this guy? Kick this strategy out, curse the master. Don't want to go for his course anymore. Go for another one. Hey, I choose. Maybe this guy steady better. Maybe the guy better. You straight away abandon the strategy already. So this is what actually happened in the new trader learning process. Because he has not internalized it. He has not proved it to himself that this strategy actually worked for him. Because the strategy work for one guy may not work for another guy because he has a different view and a different personality. 
So that's why you have to understand this concept first. It's very important you have to prove the strategy, you have to test it 100 times. At least you got 100 sample. You must have at least 100 sample to convince yourself the strategy working fine. Otherwise, don't apply it to the live uh, trading. This, was, this will happen during the live trading where you do not have the statistic to convince yourself the strategy actually worked for you because it worked for your master only. But you have to learn how you can be profitable because when you execute it and a master execution is different because you lost $1,000, maybe your whole capital. But if the master lost $1,000, maybe he just his peanut, he has $1 million in his account. So what is $1,000 risk? But then your trading account is only $1,000. That is all your capital that you can afford to lose. So that is very different when it comes to the market execution. So always go for um, demo account or paper account and trade for 100 sample first before you convince the strategy actually work for you. Then you jump in with some small money to live test and make sure that you prepare to lose all the small money first round because this will happen in three weeks time <laughs> okay let's see what should we go for next so uh Any question that you have encountered already before we proceed to the next one? <coughs> hmm? Yes. So far, so good. Huh? Okay. The first strategy that I want to um, share a little bit is called index and currency correlation. So, do you know that actually? Index is not just standalone by itself, but it's quite correlated to the respective currency. So when the index is up, uh, so what does it mean? Let's say STI, wow, now go up 30 point, or Dow Jones, wow, last night up 350 point. So what does it mean? When the index is up, it means the investor is very happy, very optimistic. That means the market sentiment is very good. That's why the market is moving up. I tell you, uh, when the market is up, uh, everyone's smiling. Uh. When the index is down, uh, everyone uh, me, mean all, all uh, black face. Uh, nobody smile. Uh. When the index down, uh, two months, two weeks, uh, 2,000 points. I tell you, everybody black face one. But then trader very happy one because this guy shorted. <laughs> I tell you, uh, index can sell. Uh. Uh, so for stock investor, a majority of the people in Singapore street are all stock investor. So when the market index is down, they are very pessimistic. But last two days, index is up. Uh including today is up so everyone is quite happy when index is up um investor optimistic and normally the safe haven currency is not required so safe haven currency you refer to like uh, us dollar uh, yen swiss franc then on the other side they will be more aggressive they will go for um the other pair of currency like euro uh, sterling pound or Aussie New Zealand cap. So when the index is down, the main investors are pessimistic. Why? You can't have the market. You think the market is very bad already. Sentiment is bad. Or every bank is closing down. Everybody, every company is holding loss. So then when this happens, most of the institution or the bigger player, they will go for say heaven currency. They will buy the dollar 
they'll buy the uh, yen, they'll buy the Swiss franc, etc. And then they will start selling the euro, they'll start selling the sterling pound, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, CAC and all this. So that's why this one is actually quite correlated. So when this thing happened and you are a forex trader, you know what happened. When the index down, you know what happened next that you want to do. And let's take a zoom in a little bit, uh, zoom in a little bit more. So actually, every country and uh, their own respective currency is quite correlated. Example like ASX, Australia index, and uh, Aussie dollars, or DAX and Euro dollar, and Nikkei and Yen, or UK, uh, FUSI and Sterling Pound, uh, China AVP and MIP. And the last one, US index and US dollar. US dollar, you can look for dollar index, or we do the other way. Uh, instead of dollar index, I usually look at dollar yen because it's quite closely related. So, in a sense, that Dow Jones and US dollar, they are quite highly related. Like Dow Jones is up, okay, and uh, US dollar will be up. And Dow Jones is down, uh, dollar yen will be down. So, if you look at the chart, the top one is um, Wall Street, that means the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones is moving up. You can see the dollar yen is moving up. And the Dow Jones is moving down. And you can see the US, uh, the dollar yen is moving down. So actually, these two are quite co highly correlated. Of course, there will be time there will be diversion. And once the diversion happens, yeah, yeah, trading opportunity come in. So if you know how to get in when the diversion happens, then you can make quite good money from that. So next one, you look at Nikkei. Nikkei and dollar yen is inversely correlated because dollar yen is quoted inversely. So like Nikkei is down, uh, dollar yen is up. Uh, Nikkei down, dollar yen is up. Uh, Nikkei up, dollar yen down. So for DAX and Euro dollar, uh, again, you can see that this is German DAX is coming down, and then uh, Euro dollar coming down, and DAX going up, Euro dollar going up. So you can see the correlation between the index and currency. So for ASX Australia index and Aussie dollar, again, same thing, like the ASX index is up, Aussie dollar up, uh, ASX index down, Aussie dollar is coming down. Okay. So what you can do is look for diversion. And when the diversion happened, normally it happened uh, at the interest rate announcement like Aussie rate interest rate announcement, Euro dollar interest rate announcement. Then you can see the spike. Normally, sometimes they will have a diversion. And then if you know how to get in, uh, using the one that I mentioned to you, draw the support and resistance, identify two level, and if you're a reversal trader, you put a sell buy limit. If you're trend following, you put a buy stop, sell stop. Okay, same thing happen, you will know what to do next. So can I get you to the second strategy? Good enough for the currency and index correlation. Can you see the correlation of the currency and the index? Quite easy to follow. Huh? Okay, next thing I want to share with you is the Heikin RC. Uh, swing trading. So what is Heikin RC candle? The Heikin RC chart huh, is easier to analyze and useful to identify the market trend. So it constructed like a regular candlestick, but it's different. Huh? The formula is different. So the normal uh, candlestick 
and the Heike RC candle is different because Heike RC basically using average of two bar instead of one single bar. So the close of the Heike RC is actually open, high, low, plus close divided by four. So it's actually the close is average price of the current bar. But for candlestick, close means close uh, at the closing price. There's a different uh. Then the opening for candlestick is the open price. However, for Hika RC is previous bar plus close of previous bar divided by two. Open of previous bar plus close of previous bar divided by two. So you can see the difference between the open price for the Hika RC and the candlestick. So actually what it means is the midpoint of the previous bar. Lah. So the highest price for candlestick, of course, the highest price during the time frame. But for Hika RC is maximum of high open close. Eh, uh, different already. Eh? It's not actually the highest. So if your open is higher, it may be high. Then the low or the minimum of open, uh, low open close. So let's see the charge. So basically, Hikin RC has a smoother look because it's essentially taking average of the price movement, not the individual bar price. So there's a tendency we can see for the candle to stay red during downtrend and stay green during uptrend. Of course, you can change the color setting. And then we look for trend continuation or change of trend. So how you can make use of Hikin RC to do a trading strategy is you look for change of trend or trend continuation. So this is a normal candlestick. So right now, because I draw the arrow for you, it's quite easy to see. Okay, this is uptrend, okay, this is a downtrend, all right. However, if you are a trader, okay, after you buy, right, green, you buy, green, you buy, green, you buy, green, you buy. This bar is red, right? So you exit, uh, because red bar, uh, reversal, uh, at this point of time, reversal down. So you exit. Then, T-O-T-D, after I exit, the guy red, okay, green again, go out again, go out again. Right now, you will say that, green then i buy but in reality yeah if you are normal trader if you are very normal trading person you are normal trading you behavior normal people after i make one point two candle three candle four i get out here after i make four candlestick profit already yeah i kick up from here normal trading trader you won't get in one you won't get in one because the price is higher than what I get out. Go out further some more. Lagi don't get in. Go out some more. Bu yao ching. Okay lah, convince. You get in, get in, get in, get in. Hey, down again. Red candle, you get up. Up, down, up, down. Wow, tall hui. Up, down, not tall hui. Down here, you don't trade anymore already. So this is what the normal candle will affect your trading. Then come down, let's say down trade, identify, oh, short already. Down, you sell, 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 sell. Hey, one up reversal candle, you get up. Then sell again, sell again. As I mentioned, uh, if you're a normal trader, you won't get anyone. But assuming you're abnormal, uh, okay, you see red, why you sell. Hey, green, you get up. Red, you sell, green, you get up. After a while, you key sell. <laughs> Especially if you're doing this down trade. Because you have a lot of up, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. How you sell hold until here is impossible using candlestick. If you are normal human, impossible to make money. Then let's say I switch it. Instead of uh, candlestick, I switch it to Hikasi. Hey, do you see a difference? I told you, uh, green I buy and hold. Green uh, I buy. Hey, still green, still green, still green. 
Wah, kok si green? Wah, how is the green, 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 only here. Wah, kok sebo? Nice. No, no issue at all. Then down here, red, I sell. Red, 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 Wah, kok we, until here, tonggak until green. You know, trading is quite easy, right? So, oh, oh, okay. Ooh, don't agree. Yeah. Okay, la, go back to candlestick. See you one more time. <laughs> so, you see the difference that if you use a candlestick for a trend trading, it's very, very tough. But if you are doing a momentum trend trading and you switch to Heiken RC, isn't it your job is become quite easy? How many first time heard of this Heiken RC candle? Okay. How many have? So have you applied using um, your trading? Does it make profit? No, because you didn't apply. You know, but you didn't apply. Okay, tonight I tell you, you learn this one, go back and apply. However, I told you, uh, the mindset, uh, I told you earlier, uh, what is the mindset? You must have at least 100 sample to convince yourself the strategy works 60% of the time before you put in real money. Uh, uh, otherwise, you will encounter the three weeks incident I show it to you. First week, random. Second week, you win a lot. Okay. Third week, you lost a lot, 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 until you talk with. This kind of thing will happen. Okay, go further in. So this is uh, the, the, I put it together. Uh, just now I put it together, the same chart. Okay, take a see green, uh, you buy. And the rate you sell. So versus candlestick, you get in here, this rate bar you get up, then you green, you get in again, and you stop here. So you can see that your profit actually much lesser versus you use a Hekana C until here. Then sell here worse because sell green, get up, sell green, get up, sell green, get up. So you have a lot of uh, kick up a few times. So you put it side by side, you can see much clearer. It's quite easy to apply. Then let's go into the real scenario. Okay, let's look at this one. It's uh, Hong Kong, uh, Hansing, 50. Um, we have a daily chart here. From here, you use again the same thing. Now you can see this is a downtrend, right? I can see that. Are you able to see the downtrend? Because it's coming down, uh, so it's called downtrend. So, but however, if, even you know it's coming down, if you want to hold a short position, you want to hold a sell position, it's quite difficult because you sell here, sell here, then this one green, you get up. Sell, 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 green, you get up. Sell, get up, sell, get up. Down here, this part, uh, you talk with you already. Means you will be drop already because you see a lot of rate. Rate not only in the rate candle, but also in your trading account because you got stop out again. You get in, stop out, get in, stop out, get in, stop out. So down here, you actually, you will make money at all from this period. Until here, wow, very happy. A short while only come up. Then if you go and put in as a HQRC candle, same thing, same chart, okay? daily time frame. Then you can see that, hey, actually I got more red. Although I still had green, uh, but then I sell, got up, sell, got up, sell, got up, sell. Sorry, this one still candlestick. So you have an issue here. You sell, you get out green. Sell and then down here you got trapped, you got trapped, you got trapped, you got trapped. Trap. Down here you got trapped again. Then you put in this is the Heikin RC candle. And now you can see the difference. Yeah, red, 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 red. One green, you only get here. 
then break in. So this is a small part that you encounter some struggling, but then very fast you get down again. You are in profit. So can you see is it easier? But still not so smooth. Can I share with you another way to make it even better? Yes. I should go. Can you stop? One some more? Yes. Okay. Yeah, carry on. Otherwise, we can stop already. Carry on a little bit, huh? So I see, I told you, right, this Heiken RC, but then you also see some green candle along the downtrend. So how do you do it? Do you want to know how to do it? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you how to do it. You identify already, yeah? Okay, these are the places that you may get out because it's small green. I tell you how to do it. Ignore doji. Ignore doji. Do you know what is doji? Doji means doji. La. Okay, do Google search. Ask Uncle Google. So actually doji means uh, head and tail, uh, this one is the upper tail and lower tail, about the same, okay, like a cross, okay, like a cross you ignore, like a cross you ignore, like a cross you ignore, only this one is a big body up, then you get it. So when it's downtrend, even though you see a small green, if it's a small green, it looks like a cross you ignore, like a cross you ignore. Downtrend, you continue. It's like a cross, you ignore. Cross is like a doji. Doji is like a cross. So you go and ignore until here. This one, the last one. Then you get up. Yes. Uh, normally, it's daily time frame. Daily. Uh, you can try on your specific instrument, put in Heikenasi on your specific instrument on your 5 minute, 10 minute, and collect 100 sample. You don't have to go forward and collect. You can always back test, you know. In your chart, huh, you can roll back one. Okay, roll back 100 times, yeah, to collect the sample. No need to go forward 100. Of course, you are uh, due diligent one. You go forward another 100 uh, to convince yourself it actually work on life also. Okay. You can also roll back history to check. Make sure you collect at least 100 sample. Because again, uh, I show it to you that different instruments uh, may not work properly and a different time frame. So as I mentioned, why intraday uh, may not work that well is because you have to do at the right time. So your intraday, you are including the lunch break. You are including the non-active hours. So that will give your chart some false alarm because that actually is not applicable in the actual trading. So you must actually look at it at the right time. That's what I mean. However, your chart uh, is a continuation chart. There's no way for you to eliminate the non-activity part from your chart. So unless you have to be very diligent, you've got to remove it, okay, from non-trading hour, you only include maybe from 9.30 p.m. until uh, 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. So whether you're able to do that part, that is quite difficult. So that's why I say it's more easier to put in as a daily chart. Then it's much easier. That includes majority of the trading activity. Yes, Raj? Yeah, there's a two, two questions, right? Should I take question now? Okay, okay now, very fast. Okay. You must finish in one minute. <laughs> um, say if you have a, a, a doji, a green doji. Yes. Very lengthy tail. Yeah. Because it's doji, so the upper tail and lower tail have to be about the same. <laughs> yeah, the lower tail must be about the same. That is called doji. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, a small body green bar. 
Hmm. And you have a very low upper weight. Otherwise, not so cheap. No, must be a cross. Must be a cross. Okay, most of the time it doesn't happen. If it does happen, go and collect 100 sample. Go and collect 100 sample. Because you, you cannot look at things on a peculiar behavior. And you got to see whether that happened most of the time. And it happened only one or two off, okay? You can just take it as your stop off or as a hiccup during the strategy. Let us go further in first, huh? Okay. So if you are using the same strategy, let's say I use it on a daily candle and uh, I see it's now trend. This is a chart that I show it to you, right? From the first bar, first red bar I sell, which is on the 31st January 23, and the price at 22180. So it's red I sell, and I hold until one big body bar get up here, which is first March at 20560. So this is 22180 to 20560 is 1600 points from 31st March, uh, 31st January to 1st March. That's almost only about one month. Huh? So for one month, uh, you got profit of Assuming one point is ten dollar, uh, this is the IG uh, HS50 cash index. One point is one dollar. One point is ten dollar. One point ten dollar, you got sixteen thousand dollars for holding one month, one contract. Good. Ah, very good. Okay, only one very good. I think I private tuition you. The rest, <laughs> the rest, not good enough. <laughs> good. Uh, good, okay. Got motivation carry on. Otherwise, I think we stop already. Except this gentleman, very good. <laughs> hey, okay, okay. So, can I share with you how to maximize more profit? Wow, well, not enough. Eh? Just now we say we eliminate, take away the doji, right? Can I show it to you how we can go one step further? One more step further, or go in how already? Are you confused in how already? Okay, okay, I thought confused in how already. So you want to have one more step further, huh? one more step further. Okay. So hey guys, you look for red candle, you sell until you see a green candle, you buy. Then if you see the doji, you skip. Don't do anything. Continue holding it. Okay. So one more step, one more step. Wow, just by this is very good in Harvard, still not in Harvard. By this you can hold for one month only, you already got $16,000, still not good in Harvard. Money not in Harvard, okay. If you're not in Harvard, then we go a bit further, go a bit further, go a bit further. This German DAX are the same thing, German DAX. On the green candle on the third January, okay, buy at one four zero five oh one four zero fifty. Then until one green bar, you get up. So square off one four nine fifty on thirtieth January. So this is what seventeen days, and your profit nine hundred point. And using IG German forty cash index one point ten dollars. So you got sing dollar, nine thousand dollars for seventeen days. Hey, okay. this one don't even have doji, don't even have to worry, right? So someday I can tell you market very kind. You go all the way smooth. So you have to collect one hundred sample to convince yourself that the strategy work for you, because it may not work all the time. 
example like here so you may be struggling a little bit but then if you have enough profit that's what i mean this come to the second week of the trading you win 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 win, win, win six times so you lost four times for tai chi yuan because you win already you got some pocket money to give away then same thing carry on so just now i say i promise you to go further so if you think hansing um for more than 1600 point in one month not enough you want more you want to learn how to get 10000 point instead of 1600 point 10000 point wow 1.10 dollar 10000 point is how much huh huh at one more zero so that is one hundred thousand eh? okay can i share with you how to make one hundred thousand using the same thing using the same thing eh? okay using the same thing so that's how i would do it eh? okay the same thing you go in what you do is you see the rate you sell second day you see the rate you continue at another cell you see the rate you add one more cell every time you see rate you add another cell okay so you sell you sell continue you sell on the 31st january 1st february 2nd february 3rd february 6th february you continue selling 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 selling, 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 selling. So until 24th February here, until 24th February here, okay. because the market start coming up, so you stop selling. So what you do is whenever you see a doji, you don't sell, don't add on sell. You see a red bar, you add the sell. When you see a doji, you don't add on sell. So that's why there are some day you don't put in because it's doji. Some day doji you don't put in. Until the red one, the certain doji, you also don't put in. Until the green, you exit everything. Everything you get out here, 20560. Same thing I get out at 20560. Of course, the last few trade, normally you make a loss on the last few trade. Because you, add, you keep adding one. And the last few trade, you will be making a loss. Be prepared for that. This is 100% sure one. Last few trades, you will make a loss. Because your last few trades, you are selling at a lower, lower price. So once the market you turn out, you will kick you out and kick your stop loss for the last few trades. And, but why are you worried the last few trades? If you have made profit for the first 15 trades, So I've been making all the profit from first day until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, okay. So I only give three trade away, but I make 13 trade. So total, I make 10,100 points. $1.10. So that is 100,100. So take away some commission, okay, 10,000 more, $100,000. Wow. Can you? 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 <laughs> so trading is not very difficult if you have a correct strategy correct instrument you get in at the correct time okay use the right capital then you are more or less on the way to make money consistently do i have some more let's see so same thing uh, for german decks just now the one only make 900 points right? however 
Wow, this one, all green bar. I keep adding. I, on the third of January, I buy the first one. Second, on the fourth January, I add again. So I keep adding, buy, 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 until here again, as I said, the last few trades. The last one, two, three, four, five. The last one, two, three, four, five. Because this last five bar, when this red bar come up, I will get kicked up for the last four or five trips. So you have to prepare for that because I will not know the market will continue going up or the market will use turn here. However, I see one red bar. Remember, this is a daily candle. So what it means is when you see this red bar, you only get out on the next day. So the same thing, when I see the green bar, I only buy in from the next day. So I only buy from the next day, buy from the next day, buy from the next day. So if you do this consistently, you actually you are making more profit. So the same thing, instead of 900 points, now I make 2,230 points. And $1.10 using the IG German 40 cash. One point is $10, you got $22,000. For your information, uh, when you are in the winning thread, uh, when you are in a winning position in your portfolio, uh, in your capital, in your account, your margin level don't increase because you are increasing your profit. Those people have a problem because they add on average loss. When you are losing position, you keep adding on. Uh, your margin keep increasing. When you win already, uh, you got a lot of profit sitting on, uh, will offset your margin. So when you're in a winning trade, uh, you keep adding on, uh, you don't actually use up a lot of margin. And this one is another tips for you. How many do you understand what I say? Okay, then you stay back. I give you private tuition. <laughs> so this is what I mean that uh, you can further fine tuning. Uh, just now I use fine tuning for you already. Okay, using um, how you fine tune. First thing is you ignore the doji. Second thing you, you can add on. Okay, then you can also couple it together with candlestick. You can put it both chart by side. So once that one start turning, then you take some precaution or shift your stop loss to a higher level. Then you exit faster instead of at the next day turning point. And you can also add indicators that you are familiar with and practice it together with it side by side. And those indicators that you can add on for Hikasi is like moving average, or Bollinger Band, RSI, Super Trend Indicator. So you put in all these indicators together with it, you can even put your Hagen RC candle to the next level. Yes. Let's see whether I still have time for a bit more. So good enough or should I go on some more? You want some more? Okay, open. Public request. I have to give a bit more. Huh? Okay. Uh, the third strategy is called intermarket correlation. So, what does it mean? Actually, if, if you know, uh, most of the indexes, they are moving all in tandem one. They are more in tandem. Of course, there will be one or two market uh, out of scope. So, that is always the case. But most of the time they are moving in tandem. So those market, if you will look at it, like I put this few chart, uh, Nikkei, the first one, Nikkei, uh, Australia index, then Singapore index, then China, then uh, Hansen, and the last one, German tax. So if you look at it, uh, like Nikkei, this one is uptrend. Then you look at it, A, actually ASX Australia is uptrend. Then Singapore market, a bit key sell down here. Then they found a sala, they go back out again. So 
it's like China, uh, China a bit peculiar la, because they are on their own, but eventually they also join the trend. So Hansing, uh, okay, start down moving up. Then this one, German DAX, wow, very fierce. So most of the time you can find they are actually moving in tangent. So how do you make you, is this like here? Okay. When you see the market in general is uptrend, then suddenly this guy here is moving down. I tell you it's going to turn out very fast. So you jump in down here because you know that this guy is wrong already. So you pick up when the next turning point, when the green candle, you jump in very confidently. If you have other market correlation for you to see. So this is how you use a market, inter-market correlation. You can narrow down it to maybe this one. I use it like a one hour chart. If you notice I use one hour chart and not a daily chart. Because you do it building intraday time. So intraday time, you can see that uh, at certain time of the day, the, actually the market went into the wrong direction. But this wrong direction, normally there is a certain reason to it. It could be one of the company uh, having big issue and that big company happened to be in the major index. So when that happened, usually you will have a knee-jack reaction. But then eventually the market will still follow the general market trend. So same thing like this uh, China, AFT or Hansing. You can see initially it's on the downtrend, but after a while, they started to realize they will start following the trend. So this is a very powerful strategy if you know how to apply it. But this one, you need some observation and you need some learning process. And it's not so straightforward as previous one, like the support and resistance or the Haken RC candle. Huh? But it's one of the things that you can make use of it. So just now I'll share with you the, the other one. Um, currency correlation. And now this one is intermarket correlation. So these two, you are able to put it side by side. You are actually very skillful, very powerful. It depends on what index you want to trade. Then the last one, um, I want to highlight a bit called uh, multi time frame trading. So uh, some of the traders keep asking me one question. Do I use a one minute chart, five minute chart, 15 minute chart, hourly chart, daily chart? I tell you, put it together, okay? Put it together, okay? Is it me or you? Okay, you can just put it together. Um, Basically, most of the time I will put in uh, a daily H1, M15, and M1. So I use a daily and H1 uh, to determine um, the trend, okay? the current day uh, trend that I want to execute for intraday. Then I use the uh, M15 and M1 for execution. So if you look at it, um, is one minute, 15 minutes, one hour, and daily. So I look at it, daily is on the uptrend. Okay, the trend is up. And the H1 hour is also on the uptrend. Then from M15, I look for a turning point around M15. Then the M1 execution somewhere around here, I will start executing it. So this is how you do using multi time frame. You use daily and H1, you determine the trend. Then you use M15 and M1 for execution. You look for the place that you want to get into the market. So you just need to put four different time frame chart side by side. And if you only trade a specific instrument and you can apply this on even uh, Forex, you can put in a specific currency pair or you can put in a special index that you want to trade in. You can put in Dow Jones or you can put in 
uh, less tech. So same concept apply using multi time frame. Anyone using this? Uh, conflicting signal, you wait for the U turn. That's where you get in when the start to U turn to the in your favor direction. Initially, you will have a conflicting direction, and that is definitely for sure one because M1, one mini chart, and 50 mini chart, they have a lot of a uh, force signal or they have a lot of U turn signal because eventually they will follow the direction from the h1 and the daily so that's why you put in the m1 one mini chart and a 50 minute chart as your execution entry and you only execute when the market you turn to your direction follow the h1 and the daily so which means that like this one i know the daily h1 is up daily is up so I only want to look for buying point. I'm not looking for selling point. So I look for buying entry like here. I look for buying entry here, look for buying entry or buy entry. So if you use Hager RC, you look for, it change from red to green. Then you get in from the red, green candle. That means whichever there is a selling point, you don't go and sell. The selling point will become your big profit level and not your new entry your new entry always follow your h1 and the daily time frame yes you can use for hourly no problem no. just a personal preference and also the instrument that you are trading with that's why i say you need to collect 100 sample so you can use four hourly and you can use uh, H4, H uh, or M1 or daily, doesn't matter. But then you, as I say that every instrument will have a slight different behavior. So you make sure you test the instrument at least 100 sample, whether you go backward or you go forward. And you make sure your 100 sample, you have 60 and more winning rate. If you are using one to one risk reward ratio, then this strategy is workable for you. Okay, so multiple time frame uh, can include your trading results. Many traders ignore the use of this thing. And once they started to find another new strategy, but still the same. So the same strategy apply, but you can just use multiple time frame to improve your trading results. If all things fail. This is the best. If everything that you learn fail, uh, go for this one. Go for this one. Okay, let's see what it is. This is called Feng Shui Index, uh, CLSA.com. You can go and check. So, what does it mean? Look carefully. Uh. This is in February. February is uptrend until around mid February time. February, it start downtrend. So the market has been going down, right? So until around 14, okay, or 16, it start turning up. So the market will go all the way. April is a good month, and until May, around mid May, it start turning down. Not my forecast, uh, because I'm not allowed to give any market advice or forecast. This is from clsa.com. Let's look carefully. Hey. <laughs> okay, if you don't believe, uh, see, yeah. Uh, February is good month, right? Till 10 of February. So declining for March. So April will be good month in May. So see this one. See the next one. Okay. February coming down. Huh? February, mid February, you're yeah, coming down. Coming down. Okay, until around, until around mid-May, okay, until around mid-March, until around mid-March. Okay. So you sell on the 10th February as indicated, then until here you get up, or well, your profit more than 1,000 points. 
please uh, read this one very carefully. Uh. This one is very important. Uh. Those cannot see one stand out. Uh. Past performance is not indicative of future results. So try to uh, do it. If it works for you, it works for you. If not, so last, uh, I want to give you a few key summary, uh, the whole thing. How to, the keys to successful trading. The key to successful, you must have a trading plan or strategy with an edge, which means that your, your trading plan or trading strategy must have at least 60% win rate or 1.5% expectancy. And always use panning order. Uh, like last week, you use buy limit, sell limit, buy stock, sell stock. And you must have a trading journal. Trading journal already not good enough, you must review it. Uh. A lot of people have trading journal but never review it. And you must have your own trading journal. You cannot be lazy, just use a broker, uh, what do you call it, daily statement or money statement as your trading journal. Because that is definitely not enough. Because that one is only giving the P and L of profit and loss. But that one doesn't tell you what strategy you are applying and whether your strategy is winning or losing. And you have to review it. And uh, one key point is you double the loss side on the profitable strategy and reduce to half the loss side on the drawdown strategy. Then along the way, until you convince the strategy don't work anymore, then you don't use that strategy. But before that, you don't know whether the strategy is in the drawdown stage. So you just have to maybe reduce the half size, reduce half the lot size, and uh, to see whether the strategy suddenly resurrected after a few weeks. And you have to make a habit uh, to do weekly revolver. If you are a trader, make sure, make sure you do some weekly withdrawal. Minimum monthly withdrawal. Don't make the broken house as your bank and put money there, never make withdrawal. Unless that is your fixed deposit, or unless that is the money you prepare to leave it there and don't withdraw anymore. If you are a trader, you have to make it a habit. Minimum withdraw once a month. Or make it a habit. I do it weekly withdrawal. You have to make it a habit to withdraw weekly. Then it becomes like your ATM machine. He did it every Sunday or Saturday or Friday. Okay. Then you have a joy in trading. Otherwise, you don't see money come out. Huh? After a while, it's like paper trading. After a while, no motivation for you. Hey, every week you got money come out. Huh? Wow, very short one, I tell you. <laughs> and how you achieve that? Because you apply the correct strategy, and the strategy is 60% of the time it's winning. So you have to make it a habit. And last but not least, do not follow tips. So that's why I don't give tips. Huh? Whatever you listen just now, there all these are not tips. Huh? All these are strategy and uh, uh, trading uh, behavior habit that you have to build in. And last, consistency is everything. Well, whatever you do, you have to be very consistently profitable. You do the same thing in and out every week, every day. And to close it, this is my contact and my website, advancedtps.com and telegram and the email and my WhatsApp. So any other question, you can private message me. And right now I hand over to Ethan and see whether uh, he has something to close it up. Okay, so thanks again to Raymond. So before we move on to the Q&A, right, don't mind just let me share one of IG's knockout with everyone here. Lah. So I think what Raymond shared just now was uh, quite insightful also. Um, for the people viewing online, right, if you have any questions, please just put it in the question box. We'll answer those questions in about 10 minutes time. So right now, what I want to introduce to everyone here is one of IG's products called Knockouts. Okay. 
Okay, so one thing in trading uh, that we need to try to prepare ourselves for is always for the unexpected. Uh, but because it's unexpected, also, right, so we also don't know when the market will get. So unexpected meaning last time, if you see back in 2020, we noticed the US WTI went to negative pricing. So I think that's a scenario that nobody could have ever expected. And I think recently we also see the banking crisis, right? So we saw the Silicon Valley Bank collapse and then uh, Credit Suisse being absorbed by UBS Bank and things like that. So actually when all these unexpected things happen, right? How does it exactly impact us as traders, right? So although unlikely, right, you notice that what happens is that the prices, right, will actually get. So this is the one from Silicon Valley Bank. And you notice that even for Credit Suisse also, right? So you notice that prices will get. So although what Raymond said earlier was more on the indices part. Uh, so indices, you rarely see this happening because you're trading 24-7. But um, although unlikely, right, if you are trading in whatever product, the market doesn't trade on Saturday, Sunday. So even in the next trading week, such things can happen also, although unlikely. This is usually more common for shares trading. But what you notice is that there will be a price gap. Okay. So when it translates to the real trading scenario, right, what it exactly means is that let's say, okay, you notice that prices sit down. And then your view is that, okay, this is a, a blue chip share that I want to accumulate. So when it reaches at this point, you thought that it's kind of like a, a previous resistance that's kind of like a supported here. You went for a long position here. Right? Then you just indicate a normal stop loss just below this low or at the low. Okay. And when the market gets down, right, what the broker cannot do is the broker cannot close out your trade at this level where there's no pricing. Okay, so the only level that the broker can close you is somewhere between this red bar that's being gapped down where there are buyers coming in. So that's liquidity at this portion. So this is when the broker can actually exit your trade for you. So as a result, what happens here is that there is a gap. Okay, and the, uh, the brokers are unable to fill your trade according to your initial trade plan. You will experience this bigger loss that you would have one uh you would have hoped not to go through like because you already put in your normal stop loss level you already did like your trade plan but uh, because of the market gap you need to experience this bigger loss and imagine if this gap was wider if it's, it was not this distance it was way lower then you can potentially even though you had a stop loss wipe out your whole trading account and i think the worst case scenario is that after losing all your capital in your trading account you go into debt uh, with the broker so it's not impossible to go into debt but so you may think that i have ten thousand dollars in my trading account but because you are trading a leverage product and let's say if you are leveraged 10 times you use the whole ten thousand dollars to enter a 100k notional value trade so if the 100k from the weekend you went to zero then you after other than losing the 10k right you'll be owing the broker 90k so that's how how uh, leverage trading works in singapore that's the regulation so we collect margin and of course what we do is that we have uh, risk policies like margin call and we try to liquidate your trade even before your account going to over loss. But in times of market gets that's when let's say it's over the weekend, then these are things that as a broking house, right, is something that we can't really control as well. Okay. So what happens here, not trying to scare you, I'm just sharing with you the reality of trading. Now. So these are things that are unexpected, unlikely, but not impossible. Okay. So what's the solution then? So the solution is if you are taking the same trick, <coughs> then you could have used something else called the guaranteed stop loss. Okay. So even if there's a market gap, right, you will be filled at this exact level that indicated without uh, having to experience the, uh, the additional losses. Okay. So as a result, if there's a big gap or you know huge slippage, your trades won't be affected. You can exit your trades comfortably at whatever your trade plan, the level you specified. But again, there is a cost involved. Okay, so is it feasible every trade? I put in a guaranteed stop. If you ask me, no, not feasible. So because um, when we talk about guaranteed stop, right, this is additional cost, right? So this premium you wouldn't incur if you are using a normal stop loss. Okay, so if you ask about that, is this premium expensive or not? Is it feasible to use every trade? Just to give you some context, if you look at indices, right, it's about zero point six points. So meaning to say, if one point is ten dollars. Then this additional insurance that you are trying to use on this guaranteed stop loss will be about six dollars per trade. So every trade is my stop loss hit. I pay six dollars. So it could be a cost that you need to be aware of. And for us, mice, we are looking at about a cost from one tick, which are using guaranteed stock. Shares is zero point three percent of the notional value of shares you are buying or trading. Commodities is about zero point three points. So this is a rough uh, estimation for you to have an idea of the cost. And again. The question we want to ask ourselves is that if you are paying, let's say, 0.6 points, then 
would you actually save more by paying this premium if the market gets? Okay, so this is the gap, right? So you have a stop loss here. If the market gets and you need to incur this additional loss, do you actually save more by paying this premium? Okay, so the answer, if you ask me, I would say that, of course, if the market gets, then you definitely save, right? So what is 0 0.6 point if the market gets more than 0 0.6 point? But then the, the question is that in a normal market situation, it doesn't happen. So it's no point if that there are prices, hit the stop loss, I pay additional. Then if there are prices here feeling it, right? And prices went down normally. If I hit the stop loss, I pay additional premium. It doesn't make sense also, right? So what's one way that you can actually protect yourself is to use one of IG's products called Knockout. Okay. So some of the problems that we find out when the product team was designing this product is that, number one, market gaps do happen. Okay, so although unlikely it happens, and number two is that sometimes when traders want to use guaranteed stop loss, right? You notice that the minimum distance, right? You need to indicate is a little bit further off from uh, using a normal stop loss. So some traders, they want to use guaranteed stop loss, but they don't want to put it too far. So the reason of having a, a further price is also because on the broker side of things, we need to find a way to hatch this trade. So that if we get, we get you out, but we need to protect ourselves also. So the minimum distance is a bit further away. So the solution that we came out of is, actually this product called knockouts where you're able to have two stop losses in one trade. Okay, so exactly how does this work? So imagine right now this is a, a buy position. Okay, so this blue line in the center is your entry price. This purple line is your take profit. So if you're buying here, you already can tell the platform, I'm going to close my trade here in profit at 12554. Okay, so additional two levels you can put is a stop loss level. So this is a, a normal stop loss. And another level you can put is what we call the knockout level. Okay, and this knockout level is essentially a guaranteed stop loss. So the only difference is that the normal stop loss is subjected to slippages, right? So if the market gets this can't save you, right? It will just slip through this level, but this is free. Right? So meaning to say if there are prices trading normally, then this will trigger first for free. But let's say if the prices get from here to here, right? Then this guaranteed stop loss will kick in, although there's a premium. So you get the best of both worlds. You don't need to pay the premium first for the trade. So if prices are trading normally, the free stop loss will trigger first. But let's say in a very unlikely market scenario where the prices get, then at least you know that the knockout level will make sure that you do not lose more than what you initially intended. Okay, so essentially there are two kinds of knockout you can trade. The first kind is what we call a bull knockout. The second kind is what we call a bear knockout. So what it means is basically just a long or short position. Okay, so a bull knockout means that this is the current price now. You are expecting for the prices to go up. So you are buying into a bull knockout. So naturally in a long position, right, your knockout level, which is your guaranteed stop loss, will be below your entry price. Okay, so the bear one is exactly the same. So what you're thinking is that you're betting that the market, you're, you're a bit more bearish, right? So you think that prices will go down. You, have a, you, en you enter at this midline, then your knockout level is above your entry price. So that's basically a stop loss above your entry for a bad position. Okay, so essentially what this is, is that it's a limited risk product. Limited risk meaning to say you won't lose more than your knockout level. So when you enter the trade, immediately you already know that what is my entry price, what is my knockout level, the risk is fixed there, no matter what happens, if there's an alien invasion tomorrow, prices went to zero, IG will still be around, IG will get you up. Okay, and you notice that we say that it moves one for one the underlying uh, IG price. This is because that in the trading platform, right, when you're trading knockout, you will notice that the ticker is different. So example, if you are trading a Hang Seng index, the normal cash Hang Seng index, and then you want to try trade Hang Seng knockout, you notice that this, uh, the Hang Seng knockout will be a Bu Hang Seng KO CFD. But what we, uh, what we are trying to explain here is that the prices for the knockout contract ticker and the prices for the normal Hang Seng CFD ticker is exactly the same. So the bid offer no discrepancy, whatever price the underlying market is trading, the knockout contract will be quoted as, as per normal, as accordingly. So there's no deviation in terms of price quoted. And knockouts, one thing you take note that it expires every year on the August. Okay, so expire once a year, but just take note this is not option. Okay, so when it expires, what it means is that if you have an open position, the position will be closed, the losses will be realized, you can immediately enter again to the market if you want. Okay, if not, if you are doing intraday trading or if you are doing some kind of like uh, a swing trading, you are holding it for a few days, few weeks, this shouldn't affect you too much. But just take note that once a year in August, right, if you hold past this period, then it will kind of like reset. Okay. 
So this is just another uh, illustration for bull knockout, meaning to say bull is a long position. So currently, let's say if you the market is trading at, uh, if your entry is about 26.050 for this market, your knockout level will be below your entry price. Okay, again, you can only buy a bull or bear knockout. You cannot sell a bull or bear knockout to collect premium because it's not option, it's, it's different. Okay, so once the market price touches this knockout level, this, that is non-amendable. So why you want to indicate that in the trade ticket, you cannot change again. Okay, so this risk level is set. You cannot amend the knockout level. And if prices touches this knockout level, then your positions will be closed. But of course, even before prices reach your knockout level, you can close out the trade any point of time, just like any normal trade. Okay, so this is just what it looks like in the trade ticket. Uh. It may be a bit uh, confusing if you're new to IG. But let's take note that this yellow line here is essentially a knockout level that is fixed, you cannot amend. So let's take this as your guaranteed stop loss. And you can have another stop loss that is between your entry price and the guaranteed stop loss. And this stop level is movable. Okay. So I just wanted to bring your attention to this knockout premium over here. So 0 0.6 points means that for this ticker, US 500 bull KO, right? So let's say if prices uh, if your trade is liquidated at this knockout level, then you would have incurred this additional 0 0.6 points. But let's say if prices are trading normally and it touches the stop loss first, right, without touching the KO, then you will not incur this. Okay, so just take note. So since the knockout level is fixed and the stop loss is an amendable level, right, so what most traders can do is that you can actually kind of use it as a trading stop function because this is adjustable. You can always amend this stop level to lock in your profit. So meaning to say that if you got the direction right and the market started to trend up in your long position, you can shift your stop loss up, you know, to even break even points or even to take profit level. So once the market retraces or retraces back, right, then this stop loss level would have been a take profit level as well. Okay, so you can lock in your trade by amending this stop loss level. Okay, so to end off this product, I just wanted to highlight that knockouts is actually one of our products that we try to help you traders to plan for better risk management. And of course, on the onset, right, even before you execute the trade, since you already know what's your entry price, you know what's the knockout level, you already know your maximum risk because you will not lose more than your knockout level. Okay, so the ability to have two stop losses in one trade. And of course, right, the main benefit I feel is that you can have an ease of mind and the guaranteed stop loss premium, you can save it if the market is trading in a normal situation. Okay, so you don't need to use guaranteed stop loss for every trade, right? Because the market doesn't get every day, price don't get every day. So let's say if prices happen to get, then the knockout level will save your trade. But let's say if the market is trading normally, then the normal stop loss will be enough, it's free as well. Okay. So actually with that, I'm going to end off this webinar over here. And once again, I want to thank uh, Raymond for joining us today. Okay, yeah. today. Yeah, so I hope the session has been uh, useful to you and will help you in your trading journey. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next webinar. And for the attendees, if you have any questions, please just feel free to speak to us right now.